Today I wanted to share with you my labour and delivery story which for me was my experience with having an emergency caesarean section. So I gave birth a year ago, my son is 13 months old, uh, almost 14 months so I kind of have time to reflect on it. I gave birth in the Cork University Maternity Hospital um, which is a fantastic hospital and I also did it uh, as a public patient. So um, uh, every country's healthcare system is different, uh, but if you're in Ireland, you have a choice of doing uh, public or private. Obviously private, you do pay for it. I don't know the full figures. The kind of, the GP kind of um, gives you a little bit of information. I think it's between something like two and a half to maybe three and a half thousand to have a baby. And if you do it publicly, um, it is free. Obviously there are benefits of going privately, but we went publicly. So um, I went along to my 40 week appointment, which for me, I was 40 weeks and one day pregnant. And I knew from my previous appointment that we were gonna talk about induction because while I was actually having some early labor contractions, I kind of hoped that was starting something myself. Um, but I just, we just didn't kind of know what was happening. So we went into the appointment again, 40 weeks, one day pregnant. I knew I was gonna be getting a sweep. I was really, really anxious about it. I just did not like being handled down there. That's what nobody does. I was just really nervous and she decided to take my blood pressure first. It was the first time ever my blood pressure was high and she was a little bit concerned. Again, I was a bit bigger and you know, they were concerned about preeclampsia. So, she takes my blood pressure, she does my sweep um, as best as she could because I did squirm a bit and she decides that I need to have more blood pressure checks taken. So I get sent down to a different room, I sit in a chair, I get the cuff on my arm and it goes off every 15 minutes for 45 minutes. They take my um, blood pressure, they write it down. Obviously I've had my sweep, that's what I was so nervous about. I've had my sweep and she tells me that we're gonna induce you kind of soonish, and you know, we might even do it today. So I'm really calming down. I'm getting kind of excited, nervous, but not like anxious, nervous. So my blood pressure went down. We went back up to the obstetrician, and she said that everything was kind of fine. They did ring through. There were no beds available that night. That was a Tuesday night, and that the next available time that they kind of had a free bed was Thursday morning. So I went in Thursday morning at seven o'clock in the morning. Obviously, I'm awake a little bit before that because I have a nice shower to kind of just relax me a little bit, and I go in, and when you first go in, I think I changed. I can't remember when I changed, but I did change into um, my kind of nightgown that was like buttoned all the way down so we can undo just the, kind of the belly part if we needed to. They put a couple of straps on you to monitor the baby's heartbeat and stuff like that, I suppose. Um, and they couldn't quite find him. He kept kind of moving and turning and flipping and the monitor kept beeping and yeah, but we kind of, we kind of got through that and then they come around to break your waters. I was really nervous about getting my waters broken. You know, I know that it's like a needle this big and you know, I was just super nervous. Um, but it was fine actually. I was already two centimeters dilated, uh, which we had known um, in my Tuesday appointment, I was two centimeters dilated. And they had hoped that I was going to go myself naturally after having the sweep, but it didn't happen. So I'm two centimeters dilated. I know that if you are not dilated at this stage, they do put like a pill or a cream along your cervix to ripen it up. Um, but I didn't need that because again, I was already two centimeters dilated. It, you don't feel it at all. They do say uh, it's like having a, a smear test. Now I was just 25 when I had Caleb. I was like literally a month, just turning 25. And here um, you are 25 before you can have your first free smear test. So I had never had it before. Uh, now that I have had one, uh, that is exactly what it feels like. So it doesn't hurt or anything. It's actually not even that uncomfortable, but I was just be dilated. And so they stick this little kind of a rod up. It's about, I suppose, that big. It has like a little hook end and they literally pull on the water and they break. You feel nothing, baby feel nothing. Um, it's pretty good. So they have like these little puppy pads underneath you. And so your water breaks and you kind of just feel warm, kind of like warm pee coming out. 
and they're very good about it, they're very discreet. There was two midwives who did it. And so it, when they kind of fills up, they kind of like take it out from under you, they put another one on, and then they kind of left me there for a few minutes. They thought, you know, the rest is gonna drain out, we'll be back in a couple of seconds. So about a minute later, not even, like 30 seconds, I kind of say to her, look, I feel wet on my feet, you know, what's happening? Because I did have a sheet over me. And so they pull the sheet back and it's gone everywhere. And they were like, it's all right, that's fine. They put a puppy pad on the ground. They said, go into the bathroom. They give me these um, kind of spanks um, to put on and these gigantic pad, like it goes kind of the front of you to the back of you. It is so thick. And they give me two of these to put on. So I'm like, okay. I stand up and a gush of water comes out, like everything you've seen in the movies, a gush of water comes out. Mind you, loads already come out already on the bed. So they were like, okay, that's fine, go into the bathroom. My husband comes in with me. I could not pull these spanks all the way up. They are super tight. So I pull them all the way up and I come back and they just said to me, do you know what? We're gonna be honest here. We have never seen that much fluid come out of a person before. <laughs> that doesn't really make you feel that good. Um, so looking down at my belly, it was literally half the size. My tummy was tiny and I'm still pregnant at this stage. I just had so much fluid. We did know kind of at the, uh, for a while that this is actually genetic from my husband's side. Big babies, a lot of fluid. So um, I, I suppose I went into the hospital at seven and all that kind of happens in the first couple of hours. And at around 11, half 11, they take me into the birthing suite, which I was really surprised because at this stage, you know, like, I'm not on any drip and I haven't really had any more contractions. So I was, I thought I'd labour somewhere else and then be brought into the delivery room. But no, I brought, was put into the delivery room and they put me on um, the drip, which I think is Pitocin. You know, the doctor, I don't know what it's called, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. So they put me on my drip and, you know, the contractions are coming and there's a midwife there and there's a student midwife there and because um, it's a student, it's a student hospital. Um, and yeah, the kind of contractions were coming in. They're kind of asking some questions, you know, what do you want? Do you want the dad to cut the cord? And we're like, yes. You know, do you want anything in particular? We said we want skin to skin and they're really good and they're really nice and you're just constantly listening to your baby's heartbeat. Caleb, again, was moving around. So they kept kind of losing him and that was gonna be a problem later on. So they asked me what kind of pain relief I want and I said, epidural. Like straight away, <laughs> I do want an epidural, and they were like, Okay, at this stage now it's about one o'clock, and the contractions are really kind of coming in. And they said, Do you want an epidural right now? And I said, No, I kind of felt like it was going to come harder, come faster, and I had to deal with it. I cannot deal with pain, I just the most tiny amount of pain gets to me, so I kind of felt like maybe I have a very low pain threshold, so I kind of felt like really. I was feeling the pain up here, but they were probably just down here in terms of the grander sense of having a baby. So I said, no, I'm gonna hold off. Half an hour later, half one, I'm like, yeah, let's get the anesthesiologist in. So she rings him up, but he's in an emergency cesarean. So I'm kind of just stuck. I did have some gas in there and that kind of helped me a little bit. And so the anesthesiologist comes in half an hour later. So that I've gotten a half an hour of pretty intense contractions. They're getting really bad. I am just getting to a point where I'm really not handling them very well. And he comes in and just the point where you are in so much pain, not to put anyone off having a baby, but you are in so much pain. He goes through this long list. If you have an epidural, there is a chance that you could have severe headaches that last up to a year. You could become paralyzed, you could die. And I'm just like, I don't care, give me the drugs. Like I need an epidural. So you sit on the edge of the bed, my husband's here and older midwives here. And I'm trying so hard, they say, when a contraction stops, let me know. I'm like, okay, it stopped, but like, I'm still in so much pain. I still feel like I'm contracting. They're quite close together, they're coming really hard and fast. And I just can't sit still. And obviously you have to sit very still. And then as I'm going to the point where, okay, I'm focused, I can do this. This older midwife tells, says, stop, stop, stop. We can't hear the baby. Like we need to figure him out. We need to, you know, fix on her belly. I'm like, he's all right. He's okay. Just let me do this. She's like, no, no, no. And I just, I'm really angry because I want my epidural. I know the baby's safe. It's going to last like two minutes. He's fine. And she was like, no. So we had to wait a little bit longer. They're coming harder and faster. They decide to take me off the drip. They know that my body's been picking up the contractions on its own. So I am now, my body is doing it on its own. So I don't need um, to be induced anymore. It's doing it on its own. 
So I lie forward, I'm on my husband and this midwife, and I squeeze that midwife's hand so blooming hard, harder than I needed, just to to say, you know, you've made this happen. You've made them come harder and faster and worse because you couldn't just let my baby go for two minutes, <laughs> which sounds crazy. Um, but that's the kind of mental state you're in. I was just in so much pain. I remember I was at the point where I was either going to pass out or I was just kind of coming out of my body a little bit. Like I just, I couldn't handle it. The epidural itself, it's not that you don't feel it or you don't remember it. You just remember you're in such a state of pain. A little bit more pain doesn't add much to the to the threshold. So I finally get my epidural in and it starts to work within about 10 minutes. And I just remember thinking, okay, I can breathe, it's gonna be fine now. And so it was, it went in at about 20 past two and it started working from about half two. And everything was kind of calm then. It was just, we were waiting for everything to happen. And I, you know, my husband was allowed to go out to have um, some lunch and I was just told to kind of lie down, relax, see if I can have a little nap, which I actually did get in, and uh, just a small one. And you know, it was just, yeah, it was, um, it was kind of cool and calm for a while. And then around four o'clock, so I've had it in now for about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours, they've noticed that my contractions have stopped. And that does happen sometimes. When you have an epidural, it can slow down or even stop labor itself. And again, they've taken me off of the drip, so they decided to put me back on that. And then as my contractions are coming again, I have just noticed that I'm feeling them. And they have to bring the anesthesiologist in again, and he comes and he has a spray, and he sprays it up and he says, tell me when you can feel it. So I say, I can feel it there. And what basically happens is, I think if you lie on one side for too long, it stops working either on that side or on the other side. Me up and I had to keep kind of keep moving. Just before that, just after I had the um, epidural, I also had to get my catheter put in. That's terrible. That's probably the worst part. You have to get a catheter put in and then I also had to get this, this little chip that would attach to my baby's head um, because they just couldn't find him with the clip. He just kept moving. Um, so they put that uh, little clip on and then they could monitor him perfectly from then on so it wasn't it wasn't an issue